11 teams, 10 games, four days, and one champion crowned at the end of it all. Folks were lined up and ready to bust down the doors here at Mohegan Sun bright and early this morning to take in the first of three games here today. A look at the bracket. And the winner of this one gets to extend their season and earn a date with the Yukon Huskies, who rolled through an undefeated regular season to cap off their 30th regular season title. We're ready to take the top off of this one. It's time for the Big East Tournament, presented by Jeep. Hey, everybody, and welcome to Uncasville. Alongside Monica Moore, Adam Giardino with you. The third member of our crew, Megan Caffrey, will be along in just a little bit. Monica, when you take a look at the bracket and the standings, what jumps out at you at this tournament field? This is the first time since the 2019-20 season that we have had multiple ties in the league standings. Yes, you have UConn and Creighton at the top, but St. John's, Marquette, and Villanova all with 11 and 7 records. There was a lot of parity this year, which means we are going to have a great tournament. When you think of a great tournament, you might think high-scoring games, but that's not in the cards for this one. We talked to both head coaches for this one. They said defense is the key, and you're going to tell a lot about this game by which team gets their defensive intensity going early on. You take a look at the coaches, and you take a look at the teams. Someone's going to need to score some points, and each one certainly has a key player. Both teams with a Big East all-second team member, Olivia Olsen, a double-double machine. She's had seven double-doubles in conference play. She hits the glass, and she's a great scoring option. Caroline Strandy is a sharpshooter all over the floor, a high basketball IQ. Butler really looks to her to get their offense going. When we return, we'll hear from Megan Caffrey. We'll get you the starting lineups and the tip-off of this one. Providence and Butler, this is the Big East Digital Network presented by Invesco QQQ. It has been decades and decades of dominance for the Yukon Huskies under Gino Oriema, who await the winner of this one. Providence or Butler will get to take on the 11-time national champion Yukon Huskies, who went through the regular season 18-0, 26-5 overall. They're the number nine team in the country and number two in the net ranking. And here's a look at the rest of the bracket. Still two more to come here today, and coverage tomorrow switches over to FS1 and FS2. Yeah, UConn has really set that standard of excellence, really elevated the league. And you know, a lot of people are going to be turning out to see them play tomorrow. Take a look. Olivia Olson, Caroline Strandy, they have not disappointed. Both of them have been absolutely huge. And this one, coming down the stretch, those two players are going to have to continue to step up for their respective teams because this one has been a great one all day long, and I'm expecting a very strong finish. Something we have not talked about that is perhaps the biggest storyline. Olivia Olsen picked up an offensive foul 90 seconds into this game. She has not fouled since. Her head coach says she hates turning to her players on the bench and saying, why are you sitting next to me? She wants her best players out on the court, and so Olsen went to the bench for a few minutes in the first quarter, and she's been out there just about every second since. Well, let me tell you, these players, they want to be out on the floor, particularly in a big game moment like this one. Olivia Olsen has played very smart today, and that's what they rely on her to do. Bosa can't buy the leaner. And now the question, can Butler capitalize on the offensive end? They got the defensive stop, but now they need the offense. A deep look. Olsen with the board. They like that shot. They know that Melmans can knock that down. A lob into Archibald. All day long, when you get that type of beautiful pass from Olsen down to Archibald, that is a big-time play by Olsen with the recognition. That is a big-time finish by Emily Archibald. 12 points, 8 rebounds, and now 3 assists for Olsen, who is incredibly talented at passing out of the high post. And there was a lot on that pass by Melman. She couldn't get it inside to James, and now a chance for Providence. Olsen's got the mismatch. She's fouled from behind. 
how much that Rachel Kent could do at 5'11", giving up four inches to Olsen. It was absolutely a mismatch, and it was great recognition by Providence. But this is what they do, because the first option is always to look inside to Olivia Olsen, because they trust what she will do with the basketball. Olivia Olsen all day long. It's just the decision making that is setting her apart right now because you talk about everything that's been on her shoulders this season, but she has really had to learn to be that playmaker, to make the good decisions, to not turn the ball over, to take the shots when they're there and to kick it out when they're not. I think her progression and her evolution this year has been outstanding. Providence has made all five of its free throws. Butler has not attempted a free throw. And the officials have done a really nice job in a game where a lot of turnovers have been forced. And not blowing the whistle. Seven players combined for just one foul apiece. Nobody's been in foul trouble here today. Well, and credit the players because they're playing some smart basketball. They're not forcing. Just being smart on the defensive end. Because as we talked about, they all want to be out on the floor playing. You don't want to be sitting next to your coach in a big game moment. Another miss for Kent, who's one for six beyond the arc. Third in the conference in three-point percentage, coming in at 42%. Great interception by Rachel Kent. You know, even when you're not having your best offensive day, you can contribute. Some of these threes that go down most days for a team that's fourth best in the country at shooting the three ball. And that's been tough for Butler this season when those shots are not falling. They have to find other ways to get their offense. They have to look inside to James or to Carter, whichever is on the floor. Right now, Carter's coming back in. James will go out. But Providence can't afford to throw the ball over. We've seen a couple turnovers here, and Aaron Bath is not happy about it. It's a fine line because we've seen that play just about work a couple of times, lobbing it up to Olsen, letting her go up and get it, but that was just off her fingertips. And again, the question for Butler, can they capitalize? They do. A response at the other end. Butler brings us back to a 10-point game. And you have to love that by Jordan Melmans because she's had several of those looks and they have not fallen. But when you're a good shooter, you have to keep taking the shots. That's exactly what Jordan Melmans did. Farrell knocks down a three with a response from Providence. She has really picked her moments today. At times, she's been quiet. At times, she has been very loud. And that was a big-time answer by Bryn Farrell. Here to tell me one of these two teams would come out shooting 7 of 10 beyond the arc here today. For you to put your money here at Mohegan Sun on the Butler Bulldogs, but it's instead Providence that has come out shooting efficiently. They've taken a page out of the Butler playbook. Emily Archibald almost had another steal. She's going to pick up the foul. She was being very aggressive there. But if you're Aaron Bath, you'll take it because she loves the fire in the belly of Emily Archibald. That's why you're seeing her out on the floor so much, because she's playing the way that Aaron Bath wants her players to play. You're watching the Big East Digital Network, presented by Invesco QQQ, along with Monica Moore and Megan Caffrey, patrolling the sidelines. Adam Giardino with you, thanks to our entire BEDN crew. We'll be putting in a full weekend, 10 games over four days. This is just the tip of the iceberg in the 8-9 matchup. Well, we told you it was going to be an amazing tournament. This game has not disappointed. But another turnover for Providence. They're trying to put this game away. Melmans takes it into the body of Morales, who gets a piece of it. Credit Butler being very good at anticipating and then trying to convert on the offensive end. The Bulldogs will not go away. They won't go away, but Providence is giving them no oxygen to make a run. They want, in fact, one thing I was going to talk about is Emily Archibald has six rebounds. We've talked so much about the steals in the offense, but when it's one and done on the offensive end for Butler, that can be hard when those shots aren't falling, and Emily Archibald is not allowing them a lot of second-chance opportunities. Norman scoops off the glass, tip to Ifosa. 
you see, I like this decision by Lauren Edwards just to try to slow things down just a little bit. They don't want to turn the ball over on this possession, and they want to get the look that they want. Just a little differential between the game clock and the shot clock. Olsen with the catch all along. That's what we talked about all day long. She knows where she is on the court, so she knows that she has that angle to make that shot. She's so good at capitalizing. That one comes after the buzzer for Strandy, who beat the buzzer in the first quarter. But Providence running away to a 15-point lead. And uh, uh, Olivia Olsen getting the bucket, capitalizing. The stars have come to shine. And it has been a whole lot of Olivia Olsen in the low post to give Providence the 58-43 lead. We'll be right back with fourth quarter action.